So this is uh, my presentation is going to be uh, divided into two parts. First, um, um, I'm going to briefly introduce uh, the what uh, our organization um, is doing and uh, what, what we have done so far and uh, what it's going to be like. And then, um, um, as requested from the organizers, I would like to briefly touch upon the technologies issues, the barriers and opportunities for developing countries, especially as in the region of uh, the Greater Mekong sub region. So, first part. Um, so, our organization um, is unique. We are solely dedicated to uh, the subject of uh, green growth, and we are trying to bridge two um, um, worlds. I mean, in developing and developed world, and theory and practice in the public private. And then I would like to say that this is the, the world's newest international organization with um, around 220 member countries and four regional offices uh, in UAE, London, Copenhagen, and Seoul as of um, now. And then we are um, running country programs, uh, basically we are providing um, economic analysis uh, for uh, the developing countries to um, for them to get the green growth pathway for their development agenda and in the greater Mekong Sun region we are currently working with Cambodia Vietnam and Thailand and national Mekong committees from the Vietnam Cambodia and Lao PDR so this is uh, the, what, I, what we are trying to um, persuade developing countries here um, Developing countries, I mean, this is the, the um, traditional uh, model um, of sustainable economy. Um, uh, I mean, for the last 50 years, I would say, develop, when developing countries uh, grows and their, their economy grows, they um, produce a um, um, lot of, um, I mean, their environmental quality is, is going, to, um, going to be reduced. And then we are trying to, um, make developing countries to take a pathway here to uh, the sustainable economy. And then this is our um, main pillars of activities. First, we are working for the green growth planning and implementation, uh, which is 60 to 70 percent of our activities. So we are working with um, 10 um, developing countries government in Southeast Asia, in Africa, and Latin America. And also we have another pillar of um, the public-private cooperation and also the research. So um, for the research, we are um, we have created the the knowledge platform. It's called Green Groups Knowledge Platform in collaboration with UNAP, World Bank, and OECD. And then we are also working on the Green Growth Best Practices Initiative, um, working with over 70. Um, authors and um, 100, 100 plus reviewers on um, finding the global green growth uh, best practices. Next slide, please. And when we talk about the green growth in uh, the developing countries context, we think that um, developing countries uh, is vulnerable to uh, the many um, rising global risk. So they have um, existing poverty and income gap, and a I mean, they are, they are also a resource dependent economy, and also um, and when they try to um, adapt green growth policy, uh, they uh, normally face challenges confronted. I mean, I mean it's, it is composed of lack of resources, financial, technological resources, and lack of capacity, and and etc. Yes. Um, this is actually um, we just converted into the international organization, so we don't really have many findings, many achievement yet. So it's it's not a proper time to um, say like that. But um, since our organization, um, uh, since its establishment as a Korean NGO, I mean before um, converging into the international organization, it was um, established. Um, in 2010, the summer, 
And then for the last two years, we are working rigorously um, with Cambodian government um, to, um, I mean, to uh, trying to um, make them to adopt the Green Growth Policy Agenda for their um, um, for for their development agenda. So um, uh, last year, uh, the Cambodian government established the National Council on Green Growth and the General Secretariat. On which we have um, some partner from the Cambodian government there, here, and also uh, Cambodian government. Um, established a national policy on green growth and national strategy plan on green growth. Uh, so now we are, I mean, it was the top-down approach uh, in collaboration with the Prime Minister's Office of the Royal Government of Cambodia. And now we are working uh, with um, uh, Cambodian government to um, have um, the priority activities, activities um, to actually implement um, green growth agenda for uh, for their country. Next. And then, um, this is a little bit um, a different story, man. This is a very tentative agenda for our organization, but um, since this uh, workshop is um, is more or less about the natural capital valuation of natural wealth uh, management, so um, we are we are thinking to develop the natural capital valuation aspect. So um, we are trying to um, uh, mobilize expertise from private and uh, public and private sectors and build on existing global initiatives like TEEP and WAVES and other type of um, global initiative. And also, um, since we are rigorously working uh, with uh, some of the uh, some um, rising economies like Ethiopia, Cambodia, and Peru, and some some of some of governments are interested in this agenda. So we are thinking to incorporate the natural capital evaluation issue to our agenda. So this is tentative, for, so it's, <coughs> it's basically open for now. Yes. <coughs> so now um, 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 briefly touch upon the issue raised by uh, the conference organizers. It's, it's about technologies, barriers, but, but I'll, I made my um, <coughs> the title the Innovation Technology Finance because Technology itself um, can solve anything at all. It can be, um, it should be with innovation and finance altogether. So, um, so there is actually no clear consensus on how developing countries can best support innovation to achieve uh, benefits of green growth. I'm saying that, but um, for the last couple of years, um, the United United Arab Emirates and uh, Republic of Korea and China invested huge amount of money so, um, in the various form of green growth related technologies and R&Ds. And also the, um, the other side of the coin, um, um, the, there is a green, growing number of entrepreneurs uh, driving grassroots innovation with large potential for scaling up. Next please. So um, this is um, um, the analysis done by GGGI and the Brookings Institute last year. So we see um, some challenges of you know, green, green innovations. I mean, it's insufficient green growth innovation activities, and there is, in, there is insufficient integration from innovation to implementation. There is insufficient capacity activities. But we see the opportunities at the bottom billion of, of uh, in developing countries, the potential in BOP market uh, um, uh, living on less than nine dollars per day, uh, their collective purchasing power is estimated five trillion US dollars, and then um, there are a lot of untapped um, green growth entrepreneurial potential with not so high tech technology. So we are fo we are trying to focus on um, build innovation capacity in um, developing countries and also uh, trying to respond to untapped uh, future market needs. Please. Uh, I'll skip this. And uh, this is the one of the pilot uh, project we did with the Asia Europe meeting SMEs, SMEs Equity Innovation Center for the last two years. We didn't really provide um, um, our funds to this uh, activity, but we are um, we um, mobilize resources from the the 
implementing agencies and the government of Cambodia and a lot of stakeholders and NGO um, in the rural community in Cambodia. So we see the challenges. I mean, there is a deforestation of fuel shortages, insufficient access to electricity, and severe indoor pollution in rural areas of Cambodia. And actually, according to the World Bank data, only 6% of rural population have a proper access to electricity in Cambodia. So, but, uh, but at the same time, we see um, uh, the uh, there is a there are abundant solar um, radiation. So, so we're trying to uh, um, apply solar technology to um, their um, um, to the rural communities, Cambodia. But I mean, we 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 just focused on the campus building and technology transfer to them because. Um, Without the local participation, it doesn't really matter because we I, we know that um, there are a lot of funding sources and large scale PPP project from ADB and other um, multi development bank. But I mean, we we try we just want to know the um, the what's going on uh, on the on the ground uh, in the level. So so next slide, please. So we did. Um, um, we provided capacity building services to the local people, and then they actually um, created their own um, social enterprise called Eco Solar. And then they're trying to um, um, trying to scale up their business activity, but it's uh, but it's um, um, it's not that level. But okay, please. So uh, first slide, please. Okay. So um, so. So after two years capacity building activities, we are trying to create um, so-called green growth business incubators in Cambodia. And then if it works well, we are um, we are thinking to replicate um, this type of activities to the other uh, countries. Please next time. And then um, this is the um, the graph from the Center for um, Global Development and Social Finance. I mean, we have um, a very good very excellent lineup of speakers, I mean, from the private sectors, but I would like to uh, touch upon this issue um, more, I mean, for two minutes. Um, here, um, this is the, um, this graph um, shows that aid is smaller share of global development finance. So you see this, this amount of um, finances from the private, um, private sector. So um, a, a is just um, just just a part of um, the development agenda. And then um, yesterday, uh, Ms. Anna Brown from Rockefeller Foundation um, briefly touched upon the issue of impact investment. Pro probably, I mean, if you if she's here, she can correct me. But uh, to my understanding, impact investing is. Um, investments made into companies, organizations, and funds with the inter intention to generate measurable social and environmental impacts alongside the financial return. So, um, so this is the, the basic concept. Uh, next slide, please. So here, um, so you can see in the graph here, um, he, this is social venture, and here um, uh, the typical venture, but um, impact investing is trying to focus on um, in the middle um, which is uh, which lacks and which lacks the, the appropriate funds for um, for scaling up um, next please um, so uh, I'd like to uh, share this very innovative um, um, model it's called social impact bonds recently um, I mean probably some people from private sectors has better understanding um, than myself, but um, I was very uh, inspired by this um, um, this structure. So basically, um, this is um, uh, uh, the structure of um, the social impact bonds. It's a, a, a it's not a bond. It's a it's social impact multi-stakeholder partnership. But it's um, it. Um, Abide by the. I mean, it follow the rule that payment for success or outcome be based um, contract. So, um, basically, uh, intermediary organizations here, and then they collect capital from uh, the potential investors. It can it can be social investors or impact investors or whatnot, and then they 
actually transfer um, uh, the capital to the nonprofit organizations which are um, doing, um, um, which has been doing well. I mean, who has, I mean, proven records um, for doing their activities. I mean, um, and then, and then they have to report, um, um, I mean, intermediate organization has to, um, um, has to have a contract with evaluate, evaluate, evaluation experts and for I mean, for for checking the status of um, uh, what nonprofit organizations are um, doing, and then they report to the government, and and, and then if on, only if they um, meet um, uh, the requirements according to the contract, then uh, the the governments can pay pay money to the intermediary organization, so the intermediary organization can pay back to the investors. I'm, I'm not an expert on this issue, but I'm, I can talk a little bit um, detail more in the offline. So, so, um, so the reason why I'm telling you this uh, social impact bonds, um, I mean actually, as far as I know, there's a only only one, a single case in UK of using social impact bond model, but um, in terms of uh, green growth um, finance or green growth um, ad adopting green growth technologies in developing countries' context, then it, this kind of model would be a, a very good um, um, a, the benchmark um, to uh, work on. So we see the chronic pro problems of aid in developing countries, the lack of transparency and poor measurement and developing I mean development outcomes. Um, and also we have coordination and we have um, um, the status that coordination is so poor among agencies and so um, ne next slide so so this is the development it's called development impact bonds which is a, a slightly different um, um, concept of um, um, social impact bonds, but it's a sister um, 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 concept. So um, investors can um, provide capital to development impact partnership. I mean, this can be a partnership or intermediary organization. I mean, it can um, it can be anything else. And the donor agencies and partner governments can guarantee that if um, um, they succeed. Uh, to uh, meet uh, the meet the goal of uh, the contract, I mean the the impact, and then the they can pay back uh, the capital. I mean guaranteed uh, money to uh, the development impact partnership. And here, I mean social impact funds. They they only think about um, the the NGOs as the service providers. But here. You can think about local private sector providers like social um, enterprises. So what is, I mean, what is good for this type of concept is um, each stakeholders has um, their own um, uh, benefits. For instance, um, for nonprofits or uh, local private sector providers like social enterprises, they could have access to um, the growth capital uh, to scale. Um, um, to scale up their operation because they are they don't really have um, sustainable funds from outside and also investors they could um, have I would say double uh, bottom lines I mean which are the financial returns and social returns as well if um, they are um, uh, appropriately measured and then the government has a um, Government benefit is I mean they could have a, I mean they could uh, rate um, um, they could have account accountability work for their taxpayers and also community level um, they could have access to increased supply of effective social services. So um, this is the one of the example 
they can be shared and outcome based funding for energy efficiency implementation in Africa. So we can we have the agenda of um, green growth, but green growth has economic and environmental and social aspect. So if we can link uh, the the green technology aspect to the the social um, dimension, then we can um, um, use this type of model to. Um, um, to embrace uh, the funds from outside, um, um, outside from the public sector, I mean, I mean the private capital. So this is my concluding remark. So um, to to actually scale up and to actually implement the green growth technologies in the developing countries, we need a more risk tolerant capital. Uh, capital um, uh, help early stage business navigate the challenges of creating market and serve social and environmental and economics dimension. So, so, so quote, oh, this is the quote from Jacqueline Novogratz. Um, she said, the road to making a real business case in non-existent markets where people earn only a few dollars per day requires not only capital, but also leadership, management support, and a strong system that help support growing companies over time. All, all of this takes a sort of hard edge, patience and greedy determination to do what is right, not what is easy. So now I think it's very relevant to uh, the, the developing countries' context. And also we need to have an innovative, innovative financial mechanism, uh, like I just said, and such as, as social impact bonds and um, the development impact bonds can possibly be relevant to pursuing growing, green innovations. And also, finally, um, we need to articulate what uh, type of um, roles is needed I mean, from international organizations, government, civil society, and corporations um, um, to grow, scale up, and connect existing, um, I mean, in creating ecosystems for green growth. Um, and in order not to, um, in order to avoid any uh, duplication of, of by doing the process. So um, this is all I prepared and thank you for listening.